So here we are in the middle of summer 2020, and with everything else upside down right now, it's a perfect time to talk about the Joe's first winter specialist, an arctic trooper, snow job, and why he might sound a little bit like a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Let's talk about him. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether you've been with me for a while or it's your first time here. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and share the video so you and your friends don't miss the content I upload every few days. Alright, let's get back to the story. Harlan Moore hails from West Rutland, Vermont, which puts him within easy driving distance of places like Killington and Mount Snow. The area has produced countless Winter Olympic athletes over the years, and our friend today, Harlan, is no exception. Action Force does say he hails from Perth, Scotland. But Harlan became an Olympic biathlon contender while living in the area, and as his file card says, Snow Job, quote, enlisted initially for the special training and support privileges that the Army gives to Olympic champions. However, to the consternation of Army PR flax, Snow Job volunteered and was accepted into the G.I. Joe team. So, as such, he became the first Arctic specialist for the G.I. Joe team. He'd be deployed in cold weather environments, but primarily remain on base when the teams went to the desert or to equatorial areas of operation. Snow Job, as his file cards also say, doesn't necessarily enjoy the cold, but he thrives in what he can do in it. Harlan is also an expert marksman, qualified not only on NATO long-range rifles and targeting systems, but excels in the way a biathlon athlete can ski up, put rounds on target, and quickly ski on through the snow and the ice. In fact, going back to his file cards, he can, quote, ski down steep mountains and pick off a target a thousand yards away, making it back to base before the end of a poker game. General Hawk commented on Snow Job, he is a highly qualified individual, a definite choice pick for the team. His talents with a rifle are as legendary as his all-night car games. Snow Job is one of the Arctic experts that really doesn't like the cold, very strange since he performs best in that environment. If we miss him, we figure he's in one of two places, out target shooting or out spending the pay he won off the last poker game he played. Trust him on the battlefield, but never take him up on any sure bets. His codename comes, of course, from his Arctic expertise, but also from his ability to run bets and card games on his teammates. They trust him implicitly on the battlefield, but as Hawk said, not around a poker table. The scams that Snowjob runs in the barracks, they say, are legendary. Snowjob first appeared in Larry Hama's A Real American Hero comic book series with issue 11 from 1983. The team was in Alaska trying to stop Cobra from dumping toxins into the oil pipeline. But it was Snowjob and Doc who got the cover of the issue, riding the new polar battle bear with a viper chasing them, shooting at them from his viper glider, a portent of what was to come inside the comic book. The editor on the issue, by the way, is Denny O'Neill, who very recently passed away. Rest in peace, kind sir, and thank you for your contributions to our beloved hobby. On the opening panels, Wild Bill flew in low over the Alaskan tundra to drop the team members off with the Joes who were pinned down by Cobra infantry. So Gung Ho and Snow Job were quickly assigned to relieve Snake Eyes and Rock and Roll on the line. And I always found this funny that Snow Job was all bundled up. The guy said to be most comfortable in cold weather, and yet it's Gung Ho with his chest hanging out in five below zero frigid weather. Who's right next to him. Same with Quick Kick, who likes to walk around on glaciers with no shoes on. But anyway, when Wild Bill flew in to drop off the team and pick up three wounded, the Hiss column backed off, thinking he was an ATG attack platform. So when Hawk was briefing Gung Ho and Snow Job, the Cobra infantry that they were firing at retreated to meet up with that armored column that had already retreated over the next snowy rise. So the team hopped in and abandoned Hiss One with Rock and Roll and Snow Job on the Battle Bear to give chase. Rock and Roll was asking about Gung Ho, so Snow Job, on his first con slash prank, told him that Gung Ho has a sister who's a fashion model. Rock and Roll wanted to be set up with the sister, but yeah, it was a joke, because his sister is nine. And he was going to swindle him out of $20 to set up the date. That's why they call me Snow Job, he said at the end of the issue with everybody laughing at him. So they followed Cobra to a pumping station where Snow Job and Rock and Roll breached, guns ablaze. They found out that Cobra was trying to inject that plague toxin into the oil. Snow Job, Doc, and Snake Eyes formed an ad hoc interdiction team to track down and stop the remaining Cobra tank. That tank had the antidote in it for the plague toxin they'd been exposed to in their attack. Snow Job took out some vipers with the skis and tracks on the battle bear. Got some really good air with it too. At some point, I want to see him do some FMX tricks, like a simple can can would be cool. Pun intended. And that's when the gliders showed up, delivering on the promise the cover of the issue gave us. But then Airborne showed up to outglider them all. And they managed to take back the pump stations and get the antidote and stop Cobra 2. Mission accomplished. The issue came out at the same time the Polar Battle Bear commercial was airing on television. 
In G.I. Joe Special Missions 2, Snowjob led a team into the snowy lands of Greenland to inspect a recently found World War II era Nazi bomber which contained a lethal nerve agent. At the opening of issue 19, Snowjob and Doc were wheeling a bandaged up Baroness into headquarters while Snowjob was complaining about how Gung Ho turned his accent on and off like a faucet. But then Doc replied with his own accent and jargon, and Snowjob just said, I give up. It was pr pretty funny. Gotta love Hama's humor. Issue 22 is interesting because Snowjob's hair is the color of fresh white snow. Not his usual red, so I wonder if it's dyed. He was cleaning up the living quarters with CoverGirl, trying to put his moves on her. So in the next issue, they tracked Baroness to a reconstructive surgery center in the Swiss Alps. Perfect environment for SJ. He was posted up on a cliff face with his skis, climbing gear, and binoculars in his backpack. There was a big car chase through the switchbacks of the Swiss Alps where Snowjob driving the vamp flipped it after hitting a cement truck broadside. That's what you get for letting a ski bum drive, Clutch said. And it all ended actually with Cobra Commander in custody. Snowjob was then in the South Atlantic Ocean on a whale with Torpedo attacking a Cobra Atoll. An Atoll full of pillboxes and Aspen placements. The guns couldn't traverse fast enough to keep up with the hovercraft, so they tricked them to turning the turrets inward while Snowjob and Torpedo launched the whale out to sea to head back to the last known location of the Jane, the Joe's freighter, but not before destroying the Cobra base. Now with the Jane destroyed, this was the issue where the USS flag took over sea operations. Later, Cobra attacked the G.I. Joe Air Sea Base, basically a combat oil rig, which was out in the Gulf of Mexico. They actually mounted it on pylons from an old Exxon drilling platform. Snowjob was there returning fire on the Cobra Hydrofoils that attacked, and it was this event that led to the detonation of a fault line which gave rise to Cobra Island. Issue 61 is a big turning point for Snowjob. He was sent to Barovia with Quick Kick, Outback, and Stalker to rescue Devlin Winchell, a third-rate journalist. It was off the books, full plausible deniability, and so they were discharged and sent in undercover as trade emissaries. Snowjob's cover was that of a vodka distiller from Finland. So they broke into the state security building to rescue Devlin, and that's when they found out that he'd already been taken back to the U.S. So everything was quickly foobar. And on escape, Quick Kick was shot and Snowjob took a round in the chest. Stalker said he would stay behind with the two wounded, and he ordered Outback to make it out and get help. The story then went to Special Mission 6, where Outback began his escape through the sewer system while Snowjob, Stalker, and Quick Kick were taken prisoner. But that issue followed Outback's E&E &E journey. So the three were then taken before a Barovian court for terrorism, kidnapping, and a list of other charges and sentenced to five consecutive life sentences of hard labor. So they were put on a train and shipped to a gulag, a prison camp, where eventually, where, especially with Snowjob not in fighting shape due to his injury, were seemingly stuck for months. At first, plotting their escape, another prisoner named Boris routed them out and they dragged Snowjob away to a cooler to beat him. This is when Snake Eyes and Scarlet faked their deaths with the help from Blindmaster and to attempt an unsanctioned rescue op. They then joined up with the White Clowns Circus as they headed through Austria and toward their gig in Barovia. Meanwhile, Storm Shadow knew that Snake Eyes wouldn't have stepped on a mine. That was a feint. So he plotted along with Billy and Jinx to go into Barovia as well. And after a week, Storm Shadow's group met up with the circus and then with swords, suppressors, and a heavy rain and the inky black of night. The team broke into Gulag 23. There they found their teammate, Snowjob, still too sick to get up off his bed. In fact, he'd been bedridden for weeks. The border was gated, guarded, and shut down when their escape was discovered, but then White Clown showed up from the circus with a clown cannon, and he literally shot all of them over the border to safety. By issue 67, they were back to the Joe's base, safe and sound once more. And he was still recovering through the Civil War event, but was well enough on the other side to participate in the rescue op of Hawk and Hollingsworth, who were being held at St. Lowe's Infirmary. He showed up next in issue 175, hauling a cart of equipment with Clutch at the pit in Utah, working base duty, while of course not assigned to a mission. Then Snowjob went to Snake Eye's ceremony in issue 214, right after he died. In issue 223, we can also see that Snowjob has been working in the Pit Command Center as one of his base duties. With Iceberg, Frostbite, Windchill, Blizzard, Bushido, Whiteout, Coldfront, Sub-Zero, there's only so much cold weather action to complete, so he's either typically on base or periodically sent away for off-site, off-panel missions, but we do get to see him in issue 272 on the bus to Springfield talking with Alpine. Special Missions 20 declared all-out Arctic action on the cover with Snowjob airborne on his downhill skis. It was a great cover and it was great to see him actually using the skis, skiing around in the blizzard while Snowcats and Cobra Wolves, the October Guard and Cobra and Joes, they all battled in the snow. 
The snow job was also featured in G.I. Joe Origins 15, where he was running around in Antarctica hunting poachers. All he had was his cold weather gear, but he was the closest Joe and was needed to be dropped into the literal hot zone that was Venezuela to protect the president from assassination. Then he had a duel of ammo and wits with his snipers. Biathlon and marksmanship skills never more highlighted than then. In 2006's G.I. Joe's Special Missions Antarctica by DDP, that's Devil's Do, not Diamond Dallas Page, reserve member Snowjob with his ice cream, along with Frostbite and Iceberg, were activated to head to an area where Cobra found a massive petrol reserve beneath the polar plateau. Snowjob is really giving Ice Cream Soldier a run for his money in that shot. And that was pretty much it for his comic book appearances. Snowjob was in the Sumbo animated series quite a bit, although his actual speaking roles were few and far between, but when he did speak, his voice was portrayed by Rob Paulson, the same Rob Paulson who voiced Raphael for TMNT. Snowjob got his own PSA warning kids, us at the time, not to walk on frozen ponds and ice because he could fall through. His episodes where he was featured the greatest and spoke the most, as I'm sure you guessed, were snow, ice, and winter focused. For example, in the miniseries, he was part of the Sea of Ice team from Part 2 and headed to the roof of the world on a polar battle bear. He was again on a polar battle bear in an episode called Hull Down the Heavens, as well as Operation Mind Menace. He switched to a snowcat for Season 2's Arise Serpentor Arise, season opener and later a Havoc during Into Your Tent I Will Silently Creep and the Most Dangerous Thing in the World episodes, as well as in G.I. Joe the movie. He was in a whiteout voiced by no one north in the Renegade series. In the episode, Harlan is from the north, Canada, and is an old army buddy of Tunnel Rats. Snowjob's first action figure was released in 1983, complete with a black XMLR 3A laser rifle and skis you could actually put on his feet. This V1 figure was also in a TV commercial, as I mentioned before, for the Polar Battle Bear. It came out right at the same time as his debut comic book issue. In 97, he came with a three-pack with Blizzard and Iceberg for the Arctic Mission set, which was exclusive to Toys R Us. And in 2008, another figure was released for the Lion's 25th anniversary. In 2009, he came in a Target exclusive box set called Past and Present, part of ROC. It had past and present versions of the Rockslide ATAV and of Stojob. He then got another figure the next year for the Pursuit of Cobra line. And then 2014's release was for the Arctic Assault set, which is part of the 50th anniversary line. It was a set where he was packaged with a foe, an Arctic Battle Android Trooper. And that's the last we've heard of Snowjob. Will he make it into the classified line that's coming out now or the upcoming Walmart retro line? We'll be sure to talk about it more if and when that happens. So for now, there you have it, the origin and the history of G.I. Joe's Snowjob. That's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.